Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone, we meet again in our next English class. Today we are going to continue with unit 6 in your textbook. Okay, the theme in this unit is crime. Crime, jenayah. Okay, so the skill that we are supposed to practice is the speaking skill. However, there might be some changes because of us being away from each other. So it's quite difficult to discuss. Uh, but we will try to make use of all of the input in this unit. Okay, so all together there are four activities and throughout the activities you are going to, uh, the difficulty level will increase. Okay, so I hope um, all of you will be able to try. I will try to assist you to complete all of the exercises. Okay, we will start with the first one, exercise one. So exercise one is the easiest Okay, exercise one yang paling mudah. This is where you share your personal experience. Okay, personal experience. Pengalaman personal. Pengalaman sendiri. Alright, so let's begin with the first question. Do you think crime is a problem where you live? Adakah kamu rasa jenayah adalah satu masalah di tempat tinggal kamu? Right? Soalan dia tanya, adakah kamu rasa? So, jawapannya ya ataupun tidak sahaja. Right? So, how do you answer? I think crime is a problem here. Or, I think crime isn't a problem here. Okay? So, you can choose to to answer yes. You can choose to answer no. It is up to you. However, I will advise you to answer yes. Because if you answer no, then the second part of the question will not be relevant. Okay? So, the next part. What sort of crimes are committed? What sort of apakah jenis-jenis jenayah are committed yang dilakukan? Alright, so for this question, you just give example. Some of the crimes that are committed here are, okay, crime number one, crime number two, and crime number three. So, if you have your textbook, okay, of, of course, you have your textbook with you. In order to get some examples of the vocabulary, okay, the types of crimes, uh, that you can use to complete this exercise you can refer to page 70 okay exercise 1 and 72 exercise 1 also okay so in both of the exercises you will be given some vocabulary some words uh, that is related to crime so you do so you get you might get some ideas there okay so let's move on to the next part of the question have you ever witnessed or been a crime, a victim of a crime? Okay, pernahkah? Have you ever? Pernahkah kamu witness, menyaksikan, or atau been a victim, menjadi seorang mangsa? Okay, of a crime. So, same thing, your answer should be yes or no. Sebab dia tanya, pernah tak? So, kau jawablah, pernah ataupun tak pernah. Alright, so you can answer yes, I have. Kalau pernah or no, I haven't. Okay, and then you continue. You continue with one of the situation there. Yes, I have witnessed a crime. Ataupun no, I haven't been a victim of a crime. Okay, uh, I will advise you to answer yes. So that we get to explain more. So let's say if the crime that you choose that you have witnessed or you have been a victim of is a snatch theft. Katalah, katakanlah lah. Kan, kamu jawab ya. And then, jenayah itu adalah snatch theft. Snatch theft tu apa? Snatch, meragut. Okay, snatch theft means meragut. Alright, so that is the crime that you choose. So, when you answer, bila kamu nak jawab, your answer is very easy. Kamu boleh jawab, I saw a snatch theft. Dah menjawab soalan. Right. However, you have to remember, we are practicing for speaking skill. So, your answer cannot be shorter than the question. Right. By right, your answer should be longer than the question. Jawapan kenalah lagi panjang daripada soalan. Kalau tidak, nanti cikgu yang akan cakap lebih lama daripada kamu. So, you add information. I saw a snatch theft. When? Last year, I saw a snatch theft. Tambah lagi maklumat. Where? Di mana? Last year, I saw a snatch theft beside the road. Di tepi jalan. Tambah lagi maklumat. Who? Siapa? What? Apa? Last year, I saw a man on a motorcycle snatch a handbag from an old lady who was walking beside the road. Okay, can you see? 
Daripada idea yang sedikit, I saw a snatch theft. Only five words. Daripada lima perkataan tu, kamu boleh hurai, kamu boleh panjangkan jawapan kamu sampai jawapan kamu sampai jadi. Dua belah. Twenty two. Okay, the same idea. I saw a snatch theft. But from a five word, here, dia jadi twenty two dekat bawah ni. Uh, it is very important. Okay, especially for speaking. Because you don't really have time to think of many ideas. Kamu tak ada masa untuk pikir senarai idea yang banyak. So what you can do is, kamu hurai satu idea. Idea tu satu je, tapi kamu hurai. Kamu tambah maklumat when, where, who and what. Alright, let's move on. The last question in exercise 1. How often do you see police officers? Okay, soalan ini dia tanya how often, berapa kerapkah kamu nampak pegawai polis? Alright, and then soalan kedua, are they on foot? Adakah mereka berjalan kaki in cars, on motorbikes or on horse? Ada, polis naik kuda, tak ada lah kat Malaysia. But overseas, yes, uh, they have police forces on horses. Okay, so to answer the first question, how often? So the answer must contain, jawapan kamu kena mengandungi adverb of frequency. Okey, kata penguat yang menunjukkan kekerapan, frekuensi. Okey, saya selalu ke, saya jarang-jarang ke melihat police officers. Okey, so this is some note for you. You can choose from this list. Okey, if you can see here, this is the percentage. This is the adverbs that you can use. And then this is the example. Contoh ayat. Right, let's say benda tu 100%. Selalu kerap sangat kamu buat benda tu. So, you can use always. Selalu kerap sangat nampak pegawai polis dekat tempat kamu. So, you use always. Right? Sama lah macam contoh ayat ni. I always study after class. Dia kata, kalau kurang sikit daripada selalu 90%, kita boleh guna usually. Okay, kalau kurang lagi, kita boleh guna normally ataupun generally. Ha, kalau kurang lagi daripada tu, only 70%, kita boleh guna often or frequently. Okay, I often read in bed at night. I don't. Okay. Sometimes. Kadang-kadang. Kadang-kadang means only 50%. Kadang-kadang buat, kadang-kadang tak buat. Occasionally, jarang-jarang. Alright. Seldom. Seldom. Lagi kurang daripada tu. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not good at translating. Okay. Tapi saya nak, I want to draw your attention to this one. Yang 5% ni. Hardly ever. Ramai sangat student yang salah guna perkataan hardly. Okay, kamu ingat hardly tu dengan kuat. I kick the ball hardly. Which is wrong. Okay, hardly means almost tidak, hampir tidak. I hardly get, I hardly ever get angry. Saya hampir tak pernah marah. Uh, okay, ataupun sama juga dengan perkataan rarely. Hampir tak pernah. Very rare. Jarang sangat-sangat. Okay, ataupun never kalau tak pernah langsung. So, you use... These words, tak payahlah guna semua. You choose from here. Okay, to fill in the blanks here. I never see police officers. Pelik sangat kan kalau never see. Uh, so, choose something appropriate. And then, usually they are, biasanya mereka naik apa. Okay, very easy. Alright, so we are going to move on to exercise number two. So, for exercise number two, the focus is on... Expressing uncertainty. Okay. Expressing uncertainty. Ketidakpastian. Okay. Because sometimes when you speak, you need to show that you are not sure about what you are saying. Because we don't know everything, right? There are things that we don't really know, but we think it is so. Alright. So, that is what you are going to practice today. So, from our previous lesson, if you have done... The listening activity, so in that activity, uh, you are introduced, you were introduced to these four phrases. Okay, I'm sure, I'm certain. So those two ways, you can use these two ways to express certainty. Kamu yakin, jadi kamu boleh guna I'm sure ataupun I'm certain. Tapi kalau kamu tak yakin, you are uncertain. You can use I have my doubt. Saya ada ragu-ragu. I couldn't swear to it. Maksudnya saya rasa saya nampak tu tapi tak berani janji lah. Um, I might be wrong. So these four expressions are already included in the listening audio. Uh, the listening, uh, the audio recording for the previous lesson. So today you are going to learn some more. 
Okay, if you refer to the language bank, there are more examples here. I am not certain, but I am not 100% sure or I am not really sure, but and the man or the woman is probably or the man or the woman is possibly, kemungkinan, mungkin. Right? The people might be, orang-orang itu mungkin apa? It is possible ataupun it is likely that Ni pun sama juga maksud dia berkemungkinan. Okay, and then I think or I would guess that apa yang berlaku kat ujung tu. Alright, so these are some of the expressions that you can use. Uh, especially in speaking task. Because in the speaking task, you know, you are giving opinion. So when you give opinion, you are not sure whether or not your opinion is correct. Whether or not your opinion tu betul ataupun tidak. Right? So, always use expressions like this when you give your example. Alright. So, this is the, exam, uh, this is the exercise. Uh, look at these pictures and complete the sentences about them with these words. Underline the phrases that show the speaker is uncertain. Okay. Ada dua, uh, two question requirement. The first one, look at the pictures and then complete the sentences. Okay. These are the words. And then kamu isi je lah perkataan-perkataan ni dekat tempat kosong. Very easy. And then you have to underline the phrases that show the speaker is uncertain. Okay, ayat mana? Frasa apa? Perkataan apa yang menunjukkan speaker itu tidak yakin? Ha, sebab dia tekor saja. Contoh, ha, the first one. This is probably a... This one, number one. What do you think this is? Security camera. Right? So, dia kata, this is probably a security camera. Tapi, dia tak sure pun benda tu. Uh, apa perkataan yang dia guna? Dia guna perkataan probably. Okay, nampak macam security camera. Tapi, sebab gambar tu tak penuh, right? So, we do not know. Uh, same thing with the rest of these pictures. Okay, you fill in the blank and then you underline. Mana dia phrases yang menunjukkan the speaker tu uncertain. Tidak pasti. Alright, so this is actually quite easy. I'm sure you can do this on your own. So let's move on to exercise number three. So in this exercise, you are supposed to compare. Okay, you are supposed to compare two pictures. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if you have done this, but in form four, there are a lot of exercises uh, comparing two pictures, two things. So by right, you should have the vocabulary by now. Nak compare macam mana but in case you don't remember never mind let's take a look at this exercise all right so from the download box okay so as i mentioned earlier dalam download box ni ada apa ada tips tips yang berguna untuk exam okay all right so let's read the download box when you are asked to compare two photos you will also be asked a question which will ask you to think a bit Give your opinion or guess something. If you are not confident about your answers, it's okay to say that you are unsure. So long as you make some sensible suggestions and explain why you made them. Right? So, this is actually... Yelah, kalau dalam speaking, uh, you have to sound like you are having a conversation. Masing-masing akan tanya. Right? So, your friend, will, your partner will ask you question about something... And kadang-kadang, you don't even know if that is the answer, right? But you can give your own opinion. Tak ada masalah pun, bagi je. Jawapan tu tak kira betul ke, salah ke. Right, but you have to make some sensible explanation. This one, janganlah hantam saja. Bagi point and then tak explain. Uh, you can answer anything, but you have to make it sensible. You have to explain, kena jelaskan kenapa kamu pilih macam tu. Alright, so this is the tip for speaking activity. So let's proceed with exercise 3. Work in pairs. Nah, cannot do that. To answer the questions about the photograph, you're going to do this, uh, you're going to do this alone. One of you will be student A and the other will be student B. Nah. Use words and phrases in the language bank to help you. Alright, this one is important. Okay, language bank is very helpful. Okay, I hope you make use of all the expressions that is given there. Alright, so these are the first two pictures. Uh, compare the two pictures. What crimes do you think have taken place in each photo? Photo. Photo. Alright, so the first picture A is 
it looks like driving over the speed limit, right? When a car is being pulled over by the policeman and then they are given a ticket for speeding. Uh, so that might be it. It looks like it. And then the second picture looks like a car break in. Isn't it? Nampak macam orang yang pecah masuk ke dalam kereta. But we are not sure. Betul tak? We are not sure. We are only making guesses. Ah, uh, So when you answer, you have to use the expressions. Okay, you have to use the expressions in the language bank and then you explain why. Kenapa kamu rasa macam tu? Alright, and then why, uh, when you compare, bila kamu nak compare, I would advise you to use these words. Okay, whereas, while, however, on the other hand. Uh, the meaning is the same, mana kalau. Right, however, oh, mana kalau, however tu saya confused nak terang, nak translate. I, I don't I don't like translating. Okay, so bila saya translate tadi, kamu pegang betul-betul maksud tu, I don't know if I'm right, if my translation is right. Okay, whereas dengan while, kalau kamu puasan, dia guna huruf kecil. Meaning that, dia akan digunakan di tengah-tengah. The first picture is a picture of something. While the second picture is a picture of something else. Okay, so you explain. And then, kalau kamu nak guna however, ataupun on the other hand, if you notice, dia guna huruf besar. Meaning that, you have to use it to combine two different sentences. Okay, ayat pertama, and then however, walau, uh, namun begitu, ayat kedua. Okay, sama juga dengan on the other hand. You talk about picture A first, and then on the other hand, sebaliknya, picture number two cakap pasal apa pula. Alright, so that is it. Um, inilah, this is the point. Driving over speed limit. Uh, the other one is car break in. Tapi, bila buat ayat tu, buat ayat bagi bunyi macam saya rasa. Okay, you are not telling this is a picture of what. Nah, but I think it is probably something. Alright, let's move on. Alright, um, the next question is, which of the two offences do you think is the more serious? Okay, offences, macam jenayah. Antara dua-dua jenayah ni, which one do you think is more serious? Yang mana lebih serious? Ha, so, dia tanya pendapat. Okay, so I want you to practice showing uncertainty. Practice guna frasa-frasa untuk menunjuk yang untuk menunjukkan yang kamu tak pasti, tidak pasti. So, this one, the offence in picture A or B is more serious. Tapi, tambah phrases untuk show uncertainty dalam ayat ini. Jangan tulis ayat ni saja. Ha, tambah something. I want to see... Uh, if you know where to put the phrases Okay, that is the first one And then uh, Give reason Okay, when you give your opinion about something Always support it with a reason So, this is because Dot, dot, dot So, you compare the two offences Okay, mula-mula kamu cakap je Yang mana lebih serious And then, bila nak bagi reason You compare again Jadi, bila compare Nampak tak huruf merah uh, Color merah ni, right? Because I want you to use the same expression Yang saya tunjuk tadi, uh, whereas ke, while ke, however ke, on the other hand ke, guna those phrases, okay, to compare. And then this is the idea. Get a fine, get a fine, ataupun will be fined, and then satu lagi, put behind bars. Okay, fine tu denda. Uh, saman lah biasanya. Alright, and then will be fine akan didenda. That one I will explain later. And then the other one ni, put behind bars. What do you think the meaning is? Ha, masuk penjara Bas Kan Palang-palang tu Diletakkan di belakang palang Maksudnya masuk jail lah Alright So which one masuk jail Which one kena denda ha, So you compare Okay The two offences So now I want to explain to you The use How to use the word fine correctly Okay Perkataan fine ni sangatlah kerap kita jumpa But do you know how to use the word correctly Okay Perkataan ni fine ha, Bukan I am fine tu No This one is a different fine Okay, ada dua cara penggunaannya. The first one is digunakan sebagai noun, kata kerja, eh, kata nama, sorry. The other one is digunakan sebagai verb, kata kerja. Kalau noun, benda ni jadi satu denda. Okay, saya diberi denda. Saya diberi saman, denda. Okay, tapi kalau digunakan sebagai verb, saya didenda. Polis itu men mendenda saya. Polis itu menyaman saya. Okay, nampak? So, this is uh, basically how it looks like. I get a fine. Saya dapat saman. I am given a fine. Saya diberi... Ya Allah, pasal apa ada de kat sini? It should be I. I am given a fine. Saya diberi saman. The policeman give me a fine. Polis tu bagi saya saman. Right? Jadi, fine, fine, fine kat sini adalah noun. Kata nama. 
Macam mana kita tahu sebab kita ada letak artikel dekat depan. A fine, satu denda, satu saman. Kalau verb, macam mana kita tahu ini adalah verb sebab dia akan berubah kata kerja, dia boleh berubah. Right, I was fine. Saya dikenakan denda. The policeman find me. Polis itu mendenda, menyaman saya. He will be fine. Dia akan di, dikenakan denda. Dia akan disaman. Ha, ini adalah verb kata kerja. Kata kerja dia akan sentiasa berubah bentuk dia tak akan sama. Dia ikut tense, ikut time, ikut subject. Okay, tapi kalau noun, sama saja perkataan tu. Cuma dia akan ada artikel di depan. Alright, that is only an additional information to you. Um, alright, so the next picture, the next two pictures is the first one is a surveillance camera and a key. Okay, so same instruction, compare the two photographs. Okay, so when you compare, you use the expression. Sama macam yang sebelum ni. And then the next question, what crimes are these things designed to prevent? Jenayah apakah yang barang-barang ini direka untuk mengelakkan saya tak bila transit dia jadi pelik barang-barang ni dicipta untuk elakkan apa daripada terjadi alright so the keyword here is the word to prevent mengelakkan apa so the surveillance camera here if you can see dia menghadap ke parking lot ha, so dia cuba nak elakkan apa and then key ha, lah, biasalah key mesti you can come up with something right, untuk elakkan apa so this one is for you to do on your own Okay. Um, Alright, so this is question number two. Okay, the second part of the question. What do you do to protect yourself from crime? Apakah yang kamu buat untuk melindungi diri kamu daripada jenayah? Alright, so you can say, you can start your answer with this. There are a few things that I would most probably do to protect myself from crime. Most probably. Nampak tak? Phrases from the language bank. Guna, guna mana nak kali. Alright, ada beberapa benda yang saya mungkin akan buat to protect myself from crime. First, apa dia? Besides, apa dia? Lastly, apa dia? Right, so I give you some example. Aware of surrounding. I must be aware of my surrounding. Kena sentiasa peka dengan ke... ke okay, bukan ke. Persekitaran saya. Alright, or the second one. Carry pepper spray or carry a whistle. Okay, that one might be good actually, especially for you ladies. And then avoid dark areas. Jauhi tempat-tempat yang gelap. Jangan pi tempat yang gelap dan sunyi. And then don't walk alone. Jangan jalan sorang-sorang. So these are only some ideas. Nak guna semua boleh, tak mau guna semua pun boleh. However, I want to tell you this. Uh, kepada yang uh, pelajar yang lemah, kamu fill in the blanks je lah. Isi je tempat kosong ni, kamu pilih lah daripada uh, senarai kat sini. For the more proficient one, kepada murid yang lebih um, mahir, yang kamu nak cuba lebih, saya cadangkan kamu pilih satu saja. Sebab dalam soalan, dia tak habak pun berapa cara. Right, what do you do? Apa yang kamu akan buat? Saya nak kamu pilih satu cara saja. But I want you to explain that one thing that you choose to do. For example, if you choose to carry pepper spray, okay? Jawab satu je. I would carry pepper spray to protect myself from crime. Habislah. Sebab satu idea je kan. Lepas tu nak macam nak lagi panjang. Ah, you add information. You give a reason. Kenapa pepper spray? Because it is small and handy. I can put it, I can easily put it in my handbag or in my pocket. Ah, and then the effect of a pepper spray is is bad. Right? I will have time to run and get help. Ikutlah huraikan sikit kenapa pepper spray. That is actually a very good technique uh, in answering question. Sebab kalau kamu cuma bagi list, benda tu macam tak, kita tak faham tau. No? Tak ada elaboration. But if you give only one answer, but you elaborate on the answer, then you sound more convincing. Kamu akan bunyi lebih meyakinkan. Which is good. Which is very good actually. Okay, you have to practice doing that. Alright, so let's move on to exercise number four, the last one. Alright, so there are three questions given to you. The first question, what can communities do to help reduce crime in their area? Communities, masyarakat. Apa yang masyarakat boleh buat untuk membantu reduce, mengurangkan jenayah di tempat mereka? 
right? So this is the example that I gave. Uh, it is not compulsory for you to choose the same idea. You can write your own idea, no problem. But I would suggest you to write about night watch program. Okay, uh, what do we call it? Rak jiran rakan tetangga or something. Yang tetangga-tangga tu lah. Okay, so these are some of the vocabularies that you can use. Okay, these are some vocabularies that you can use. Uh, bukannya kena guna semua ni dalam satu ayat. No, janganlah sama-sama macam tu. A better way is to use one idea in one sentence. Barulah kamu dapat idea, uh, idea yang banyak, ayat yang lebih panjang. Right, for example, the first one, residence. Uh, residence must form, uh, must organize a night watch program. Okay, and then take turn pula. Every night, they take turn uh, to watch the area. And then patrol. They can also uh, schedule patrol routine around the housing area. Ha, ikutlah, satu point, satu ayat. Barulah banyak, barulah panjang jawapan kamu. Nampak tak? Do not just combine everything. Jangan malas. Do not just combine everything in one sentence. Okay, residential area, kawasan perumahan. Alert the police. Bagi tahu pihak polis. Suspect, shock, unusual, luar biasa. And then you can also give examples of crimes yang terjadi that happen at night. Sebab program ni waktu malam saja. Alright, so apa contoh-contoh crimes yang mungkin berlaku di waktu malam? Boleh bagi sekali. So, answer this in one paragraph. And then, the next question. What things do you think cause people to turn to crime? Apa benda kamu rasa menyebabkan orang turn to crime? Mula melakukan jenayah. Basically, apakah punca-punca orang melakukan jenayah? So, I give you the answer. I bagi tiga lagi jawapan dekat kamu. Alright, the first one is poverty, kemiskinan. The second one is drug abuse, penyalahgunaan dadah. And the last one is for fun or for pleasure. Saja suka-suka. So, these are the three most common reasons. Sebab yang paling biasa. Kenapa orang melakukan jenayah? Okay, so jawapan kepada soalan ni dah ada dah. So, I want you to add something. I want you to answer how, bagaimana, apakah kaitan kemiskinan dengan jenayah. Bagaimana kemiskinan boleh menyebabkan seseorang melakukan jenayah. Right, for example, because they are hungry and they need to feed their children. Uh, so, they, apakah jenayah yang mereka buat tu? They shoplift, okay, mencuri daripada kedai-kedai. Dia tak rob. Biasanya kalau disebabkan poverty, dia tak pergi rob kedai mah. No, they only shoplift, shoplifting, right? Curi-curi makanan kecil-kecil. Uh, so, you have to give example. When you give example, give something logical. And then, drug abuse, penyalahgunaan dadah. Uh, how? Apa kaitan penyalahgunaan dadah dengan jenayah? Uh, you can talk about losing self-control, right? When you are addicted, you cannot treat, you cannot think straight. Uh, and then, you lose control of yourself and then you do bad things. And then, give examples. Uh, yang ni barulah robbery and then robbery dia bukan pergi kedai mas dia robber uh, dia, ro dia rob rumah orang right and then the last one is for fun and pleasure for fun saja nak seronok-seronok pleasure saja nak untuk keseronokan sementara right so this one you can talk about teen peer pressure ok tekanan rakan sebaya because they want to impress their friends they want to show that that they are a cool one ok they want to To, to look cool among their friends. So, bolehlah. Those could be the reason. How? Um, this reason is related to crime. Okay. This question, I do not want to give sample answers. I mean sample sentences. I want you to try on your own. Alright. The last one. Do you think prisons should train prisoners? Adakah kamu rasa penjara-penjara sepatutnya melatih banduan prisoners? So, so, supaya they can start a new career. Supaya mereka boleh memulakan career yang baru when they leave the prison. Bila mereka keluar daripada penjara. So, this one is, there's no right or wrong answer. Up to you. If you answer yes, tell me why and then give me example. If you answer no, same thing. Tell me why and give me example. Okay, write this in one short paragraph only. Uh, is that all? Yeah, that is all. So, today's task is exercise 1, 2, 3 and 4. All of the exercises there. 
uh, but you have to do it on, on your own. It won't be a speaking task. No, it will be a writing task. Okay, and the focus is this one. The focus is to help you practice using the words and phrases given in the language bank. Okay, so exercise one and exercise two is very direct, straightforward. So you don't have to worry about that. About those, this, ah, ya Allah, about these two exercises. But for exercise three and four, please, 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 when you write your answer, try using the words and phrases from the language bank. Okay, it will be very helpful for you. Okay, so that is all for today. I will end our lesson today with a quote. Integrity is doing the right thing even when no one is watching. Okay, so I hope you as a student have integrity. Your role as a student, your responsibility as a student is to study even though there is no one to see, even though there is no one to force you to study. But you should know best. Okay, you should do the right thing for your own future. So your task after, if you are looking at this right now and listening to me, what I want you to do is close YouTube after this and then uh, open up your browser and look for quotes about doing the right thing. Quotes about doing the right thing. And then you try to find anything that you like there, something that you feel like, yes, we have to do this. And then you download the picture and share it in our group as usual. Alright, so that is all for today. I wish you all the best. Please, please, please try to complete all of the exercises today and submit to me. Okay, um, if you don't do this, no one is going to help you later because these are all the skills that you need to improve yourself. Okay, I wish you all the best and have a nice day. Assalamualaikum.